who was a knight like any other, as I ventured into the immersive world of Wings of Fire Beta, a popular free roam RP game based on the best-selling Wings of Fire series by 2ED Sutherland. As I joined a random server and delved into a camping roleplay, an unsettling occurrence shook me to the core. After the initial welcome message, my screen suddenly froze and started glitching, causing the brightness to dim rapidly. A mysterious ice wing materialized mere feet away from my character, its eyes devoid of expression, giving me a sinister era that left me deeply unsettled before vanishing into thin air. I couldn't help but wonder if I'd imagined the encounter, dismissing it as a glitch or a trick of the game. Little did I know, this was just the beginning of an eerie and unsettling series of events. Later, in a Rainwing hosted roleplay, I chose the role of a camper and learned about the Watcher, who was supposed to haunt the campers, but should never be looked in the eye. The Rainwing host was named Flower. Five more players joined the camping RP after a while, two as scavenging guards, one named Flare, and the other Scorch. A Mudwing named Muddy and a Rainwing named Peace partnered with an Icewing named Blizzard, who both chose to be medics in the RP. Muddy chose to be a camper like me. As we were waiting for more players to join, Muddy experienced the same glitch with the Icewing as I did, and I was sure glad as I wasn't the only one who witnessed the Watcher. As Muddy described what he saw, the other par participants dismissed it as a prank, but I couldn't ignore the sense of dread building within me. The warnings about the Watcher and the nonchalant attitude of some players made the experience increasingly unsettling. I looked up at Blizzard and Peace, and noticed that Peace was only responding with nodding and shaking emotes as Blizzard asked her questions. I wondered if she was mute, communicating only through emotes. After a while, we gathered enough players to start the RP, and we flew over the Skywing's arena's walls to the Skywing playground where we stumbled upon a vast, airy cave that seemed to swallow all light. Everyone circled around the fire, and as the flames flickered in the darkness, a sense of unease settled over us. Muddy declared he would fetch dinner, and as the heat left, the sinking sun cast long, eerie shadows. I couldn't shake the feeling that something was not right. The conversation turned to hobbies and books, but no one mentioned anything about the Watcher. When Muddy returned with a mouthful of lifeless trout, a chill ran down my spine. I suggested exploring to find the Watcher, and Blizzard confidently agreed, although there was a tremor of doubt in his voice. As we walked through the forest, the remains of fish and small animals only added to the ominous atmosphere. I asked Blizzard if he believed there is a Watcher, but he just laughed and told me it is just a myth that someone made up to scare us. I started to get comfortable by Blizzard as we walked to the beach with the sun setting slowly. As we strolled, we came upon some dead dragons, two Skywings, one Nightwing, and one Mudwing scattered everywhere. What terrified me the most was that they were smiling through pools of blood with black hollow eyes. Shocked, we ran back to camp to make sure everyone was safe. As the sun set over the horizon, we made it back to camp and everyone was there. I blew out the fire in the middle, and that's when I made a mistake. A few minutes past midnight, I suddenly had a strange feeling that someone was watching me. When I looked down at the forest below, I saw a white ice wing halfway behind a tree, staring up at me. My screen started to glitch, and the sounds became sorted. It was as if there was a malevolent force trying to communicate with me. I couldn't shake off the feeling of being watched. The eerie sight of the smiling dead dragons haunted me. I hurriedly tried to focus on something else, but the image of their lifeless grinning faces flashed through my mind, causing a chill to run down my spine. Every creak, every rustle in the darkness made me jump. I couldn't sleep that night, and I couldn't shake off the feeling that the Watcher was still out there, silently observing from the shadows. So I went back to sleep, only to be woken up by an ear-piercing scream somewhere nearby. The sound jolted everyone awake, and the campers exchanged confused glances. It was then that I realized Muddy was nowhere to be found. My heart raced as I reluctantly dragged myself outside the search for Muddy in the eerie darkness of the night. I bravely but regrettably ran outside the search for Muddy. Despite my efforts, 
I couldn't find him. Eventually, I discovered his lifeless body lying in a pool of blood near the river close to the Sky Kingdom. The other victims did not exhibit any signs of frost breath, whereas Muddy showcased scars from frost breath on both his legs and wings. There was also a note above his head that I once picked up that read, in sharp blood red letters all close to each other. The chilling message sent shivers down my spine, and I couldn't help but feel a sense of unease as I tried to comprehend the cryptic warning. I nearly screamed, but managed to hold it in as I ran back to camp to notice everyone besides Scorch was still there. Flower looking worried, Blizzard looked confused and angry, and everyone else was still scared. Peace put her talons on Blizzard and looked up at him confused on what was going on. I asked where Scorch went, and Flower said that he went after you. I said that Muddy was dead, and a note left by his body that said, <laughs> which scared Flower. It was a restless night for all of us, knowing that two dragons may have met their fate at the hands of the Watcher. The next morning, we looked to find that Scorch never returned. Flower warned us to stay inside for safety, but I couldn't shake the need to find out if Scorch was still alive. Despite Flower's attempts to stop me, I reassured her everything would be fine. This time, Flair insisted on joining me, and we promised to bring back breakfast. As we ventured in the forest, we stumbled upon Muddy's lifeless body near the river. Not long after we discovered Scorch lying motionless by the riverbank, facing the water, I found a chilly note in his mouth. It read, <laughs> in bold, blood-red, close-up letters. It sent a shiver down my spine as I realized the implication of these words. I was starting to think that joining this roleplay was a bad idea, but I didn't know things would take such a twist to turn. Flair and I discussed the Watcher as we strolled to a nearby river to catch fish for breakfast. After finding the river, we fished and then headed back to camp, passing by Muddy's body as we ascended the mountain to reach camp. The server was eerily empty with only us in the camp roleplay. All quietly consuming our fish, Peace communicated with Blizzard through gestures, while Flair, after accidentally burning his fish, devoured it hungrily. I found myself eating my fish slowly, pondering the unsettling sight of the bodies. It was a meal filled with silence and dark thoughts. I had a pretty eventful day at the beach. I spent most of the time swimming in the ocean and enjoying the sun with the group. It was nice to relax, but two of our friends, Blizzard and Peace, decided to go into the water. When I turned to build a sand castle in front of me, I heard a scream come from the ocean. Quickly, I turned and saw that Peace was the only one above water, but Blizzard was nowhere to be seen. Peace quickly swam to shore, terrified, running behind me, sobbing quietly as it. After a while, Blizzard's body swept to shore. Sadly, he wasn't alive though. His eyes were hollow black, had a disturbing, weird smile as a little bit of blood came from his mouth, and he was missing one of his horns and claws. There was another note in his mouth, which I dared didn't want to pick up, but I did, which read, the same bolded blood red letters. I was speechless after reading this note, and the remaining campers were com comforting peace as she still sobbed. The sun began to set, we headed back to our campsite where I started a fire. Flower was worried about leaving the roleplay and was concerned about the Watcher potentially harming the other campers. Flair reassured her, but Peace also seemed of wanting to leave the roleplay. As the evening progressed, a chilly breeze swept in, and I noticed that Peace seemed uneasy and her scales were changing color. Even though she was deaf, she managed to convey to Flair that she wanted to leave the roleplay, but he promised to protect her. The tension among the group grew. And except for Flair, everyone seemed to want to leave. Since Flair and Peace were asleep, I asked Flower to join me for a night watch, and to my surprise, she agreed timidly. As we moved away from the camp and passed by Muddy's lifeless body once more, Flower's undies grew even more palable. Continuing, continuing toward the Sky Kingdom, we stumbled upon a cascading waterfall passing by some abandoned dens. Suddenly, my screen dimmed and my character inexplicably froze. Struggling to turn my camera to check on Flower, the Watcher materialized for a chilling five seconds before vanishing. 
My screen returned to normal, allowing me to move my character, but an unsettling feeling lingered. I quickly looked behind me to see if Flower was still there. My heart pounded in my chest as I strained to make out her familiar form in the darkness. Panic set in as I realized with a sinking feeling that she was nowhere to be seen. Surrounding silence felt heavy and ominous, and a chill ran down my spine as I stood there, processing the terrifying rea reality that she was gone. As I gazed around at the dense, looming trees, there was an eerie, unsettling feeling that slowly intensified. It was then that I finally caught a glimpse of her, lifeless body hanging from a tree, eyes hollow black with a disturbing smile, with blood coming dripping out of her mouth. I ran towards her lifeless body and noticed a note protruding from her mouth. Hastily, I, I retrieved it and was taken aback as I read on this message. <laughs> spelled out in bold black letters. Quickly, I turned around to confront the watcher, but as soon as I, uh, but as soon as our eyes met, the screen froze, plunging into darkness. All I could discern were the watcher's dark, hollow eyes before my screen went completely black. A character's screen pierced through the silence as the image of my lifeless, in-game character flashed before me, followed by a return to darkness and an abrupt ejection from the game. I couldn't help but wonder about the fate of Blizzard and fate of Flare and Peace, if they were alive or not. But be aware, if you ever come across the Watcher on any server, remember, do not dare make eye contact at any cost of your or your fate will be unpleasant.